Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. We're out here on the Thompson Project and we're actually, as we can see, we're showing a lot of progress. Last time we were here, we were rolling out floor joists. I was talking about uh, the WP28 hanger and now we've got all the exterior walls done. We've got almost the entire roof rolled out. Um, we've got some details we've got to take care of on this roof in a certain couple sections here. As you can see where the existing roof comes in and then we've got an existing gable wall end right here you can see right up there that we've got to finish we got to finish blocking that out run crickets and then we have to actually start sheathing we're trying to go like mad here um, we've got some really interesting weather coming in the next couple three four days uh, it's gonna get really really wet and really really cold I'm talking about like this is the end of June and we're talking about 60 degree temperatures maybe even in the 50s um, so we went from really warm to really cold here in a hurry so we're gonna try and get this rest of these uh, rafter tail ends finished um, finish up all the details to tie into the existing roof and then we're gonna start throwing up sheathing on the walls and the roof and start drying this thing in so we can try and stay ahead of the weather as best we can mother nature is always a lot of fun to do business with especially in the summertime. So um, take you through here real quick. You can see the rest of the demo is pretty much complete. Um, it's kind of a mess. That's how it is when we're trying to do two things at once or more. We got cabinets in here. Um, all of this is the existing home. This was actually the addition I was talking about last time we were here that was done, I think early 90s. Again, we ended up ripping all the sheetrock out of here so we can upgrade. Um, all of our thermal and energy efficient values, our values go up and we can do this because we can get back in and do a combination of more bat and some closed cell spray foam as well. Um, we're getting closer on finishing demo in these rooms. You kind of kind of stagger things because we have to have space to work and store stuff as well too. But we're getting really close on all of that. Um, obviously, the main priority right now is finishing up all of our roof tie-in and starting to sheathe this thing so we can start drying it in. We're using our Zip System product for roof and walls. Um, that's a great product like I've been talking about. It's got a built-in WRB. And once it goes up, we just run the zip tape for all of our seams, fill our nail holes, and we are actually watertight at that point once everything is done. Take you in here. So this is gonna be the future master bathroom and closet walk-in area right through here. And then we'll push out into the master bedroom here. And then we've got a giant double door with side lights going in right here as well. Back of this house, on this side, we're gonna have another French door right where this existing window is. So double door here. All this thermoguard's gonna come off. Um, we're gonna go right back with our zip system, wall sheathing here as well. And that'll all be upgraded, which is great. So we'll have both the entire house upgraded with our zip products. And that makes me really happy. Um, all of this is gonna be a vaulted living room, kitchen in here, right back to that half bath. And then we've got a this stuff will stay the same, bathroom in here. So um, all the things to kind of look for and combat as you're doing remodel and addition projects, working through what the engineer has put together as far as picking up additional load, running structure to tie back in, and at the same time, making it functional architectural to work, especially since Casey is wanting to do vaulted ceiling in almost the entire addition of this home. The only thing that really isn't getting any vaulted ceilings at this point, because he is waffling on even doing it in the bathroom, is the bathroom. Otherwise, we're gonna have a vaulted look throughout the entire edition of this home, which is gonna be a great, great feature. It's all gonna be tongue and groove to match what was in the existing edition, and it's gonna look fantastic. But you have to deal with those issues, especially when you're backing out, meaning you're blocking areas to have nailing surfaces and functionality with drywall and everything else to make sure you can actually put it back together and that's all the complicated fun stuff that you get to deal with when you're doing renovations and addition projects 
basically you're working with half a house on this project, brand new construction. The other half of the house is obviously existing conditions and you have to work around that. Um, you can see we've got a lot of electrical work yet to start and we've even got really awkward little details in the house itself when it's tied back into the new structure. Things like the flooring is about three quarters lower here than it is here based on what was pulled out originally. So all the little things you have to kind of deal with when you're putting these things back together. It's more than just a Lego, Lego construction project. The other cool thing about this project is the fact that we're dealing with a lot of structure in a small space. And the cool thing about this project is, one, we're doing a lot of vault on the basically architectural side of things. There's also a lot of walls that got removed that aren't going back in to increase that capacity for flow and space within the house. And although he's basically doubling his house size, um, it's still not a massive space. So we gotta make it work for a family and it's gotta be functional enough when you're building on to and spending the money to build onto your house. You wanna make it so it actually feels bigger overall when it's finished. Um, so we've got you know massive beams going in here. We've got Microland product. We've got a triple 18 inch beam to pick up this span from the front of the new addition part of the house all the way back to the original exterior wall in the back of the house. So we've got to pick up that load. So we have an LVL that's carried across here to pick up a load back onto the existing stem wall here. And then we do the same thing back here with a smaller span. We've got a triple running back here that's actually a 14 inch to run back to our new actual retaining wall to pick up some, to combat some of that soil like I was explaining to you in the last video. Um, so all of that put together, tying that all back in, running roof, new roof load out to the new exterior walls, how we're gonna do that. I think the engineer did a really good job. This was the existing exterior of the uh, south wall of the house here. So we've got another 14 inch going in here pick up all that load. So there's a lot of open spans that we had to run and, and figure out how to make that work. One, it's gotta be obviously structurally sound. So that's step one. And then from there you back out your ideas on how that's going to finish. So it's a lot of, the, the whole point behind a lot of building is being able to conceptualize what it looks like when it's finished without actually being able to see it. And yeah, we have 3D models of things we can use now, renderings, but Really what you have to do when you're, when you're doing these types of projects, and even with new construction, you need to be able to visualize in your head and walk through and conceptualize seeing it up here. Because what you're looking at on a piece of paper is 2D, right? And in a 3D world where everything comes together, nothing's gonna be perfect. It looks good and it finishes right structurally on a piece of paper. But when you actually get out here and build it, it's when things, what they call field adjustments, start to change. And those changes have to be combated on site and you have to work with your client or if you're you know, building a spec, you have to decide what you want to do to make that as close to your vision in your head as it is actually in the real world. All those little things get put together and it gets finished in the final project. But the, the interesting part about all of those decisions that are made and the things you have to do to get to that finished product is no one gets to see about 80% of that work, right? It's getting buried behind finished cladding, drywall, everything that you put in there to make the home finish, tile work. That all gets buried behind all of that and no one actually gets to appreciate, except for the people like us that get to do it, um, what it actually went into making it all the way to basically the finished product, the finished pictures that you see on all the social media sites all the TV shows that you watch. That's really what um, I like best about building things is being able to make those decisions and create the finished product with all the stuff that you never see behind the walls. Anyway, um, we're gonna keep moving here. Like I said, we got weather coming in and we got to rock and roll to get this thing watertight as fast as possible. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you guys, if you haven't, find that red button, hit subscribe. I really would appreciate it if you could do that. If you like this video, Hit that thumbs up because I'm gonna keep pumping out the, the Thompson project as we roll along. Um, check out the podcast on all media on all audio media platforms. Also got the podcast on YouTube. Casey Thompson has been a guest on it a couple times, so I appreciate that. Shout out to all the guys working hard for me on this project and for Casey. Um, it's coming together. We're moving along. 
you got questions, leave them in the comments below. Check out all the other videos too on this, on this channel. Um, I'm trying to get as much content out for everyone that's watching as possible. It's a lot of fun and I better get back to it.